has. You always put your soul in that song, don't you? Why shouldn't I? It is my soul. You got all shoes? Everywhere I go. You know, I couldn't get tickets tonight. The show must be knocking him dead. Yeah, I'm knocking me dead, too. Another year of this, no more trooping for me. I'm gonna give up the grease paint. Do what? Flip coupon. <laughs> I have a life-size picture of Grace Hay sitting quietly and twiddling her thoughts. Oh, I'll do something else. Produce shows, develop talent, give the kids a chance. You didn't come here to talk shop. What's on your mind? Anything wrong with my kid? No, he's all right. The grandparents. What's the matter with them? I've just learned they're broke. Bankrupt. Good. Those sanctimonious old. What's going to happen to Peter? I don't think he knows anything yet. But he'll have to be taken out of the school. Oh, no, no, not a chance. I want my boy to have culture and education, like his father. Like his grandfather? Maybe. That old Jen ain't so bad. He made a pretty good job of his own son. Maybe we could write him a check. Peter could go on just like he's been going. He wouldn't know the difference. What do you say? Okay, we'll sell him a check. Peter Kendricks, Midwick sophomore. is champion with 40. Get a load of this. College kids eating live goldfish. You know, I nearly married a sword swallower once. But a human walrus? Disgusting. Oh, I suppose most youngsters have a touch of the exhibitionist complex? Yeah, but this Peter Kendricks is over seven. He's a smart aleck. He should know better. Or does he? This is the regular check for Mr. Kane, your attorney. And this, this letter I would suggest you read before signing. Also, I have verified our reservations on the plane for Havana. It leaves at 7.20. Cancel. But, Miss Hayes, you said that this was to be our vacation. Did I? We'll take our vacation someplace else. I'm tired of big towns. Rio. Havana. Buenos Aires. Castanets, guitars, they're all alike. But you particularly wanted to see a dancing team in Havana. Yeah. Maybe I better keep my eye peeled on local talent. Who can tell you may have a spark of genius? <laughs> also, Mr. Arnold will be waiting for you. You know, Mary, this college town of Midwick I've wanted to visit for a long time. I met a grand fellow there once. I'll cancel the reservations, Miss Hayes. Thank you. My grief. What's this, the Johnstown flood? Hey, you little nitwit! Come back here, you little ape! Hey, listen, Freshie, when I'm on a mud pack, I'll go to a beauty parlor. <laughs> I'm sorry, lady. I'll speak to the town council about this street. Aren't you Peter Kendricks, the fish swallower? That's me, Midwick's most popular student. What's your name, Gorgeous? None of your business. <laughs> uh, but names are my business. You're new around here and cute enough to be on my uh, waiting list. <laughs> Fresh. Say, listen, Don Juan, forget about how great you are. What about our clothes? Well, send them to the cleaner, Grandma, and charge it to me. My credit's good all over town. Says you. Says me. See you later, sweetheart. Your credit's good, eh? You little... What's this? A college or a sanitarium? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Uh-huh. Now, take a good look, will you? Did I get it off my kisser? Oh, you look wonderful. Yeah, I bet I do. <laughs> look, there's a guy down there enough to answer a few questions. Probably the school gardener. Hey, mister. How long have you been working here? Oh, about an hour. Hey, Toot. I mean, how many years? Oh, well, let me see now. I should say I've been here at Midwick uh, 27 years. 27 years? Mm -hmm. And now would you mind getting off my erythrina herbacea? Your what? My erythrina herbacea? Well, whatever that is, you shouldn't leave it laying around. What's that old guy doing, giving me the double talk? Of course not. Erythrinia herbacea is the technical name for a flower. A flower? Well, he uses a lot of 50-cent words for a gardener. I suppose if one were around here very long, education would just seep through the skin. <laughs> I'll stick to cold cream. <laughs> nice day, Dr. Warren. Yes, delightful, Rodney. Say, Sonny. Mm -hmm. Who was that you just spoke to? Oh, Dr. Warren, president of the college. Uh-oh. <laughs> president? Mm -hmm. Why the overalls? Oh, he's an amateur horticulturist, just likes to putter about. Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> I just got my allowance in time. Come on, let's go to Nick's. Come on, gang, Peter's treating again. Oh. Hey, Steve, deliver this to my dormant. Oh, my allowance? Yeah. I guess there's a village cut up in every town in school. Yes, I guess there is. But why did it have to be him? Yes, ma'am. Now, something for you? Can I get a waiter here? Well, I'm the waiter, but you don't come get me. No, I take yours. Something you want? A uh, gin sling. A mud sling? Oh, I just had that. I want a gin sling. Gin sling? Uh, we don't got this. I'm very sorry. Get me a gin sling. Yes, ma'am. I'll see. Something for you? I'll have an ice cream soda. Uh, what flavor? Chocolate. Chocolate with ice cream, soda water, and you want uh, gym sling. Yes, I remember. We still don't got it from before. Don't you make anything here? Oh, sure. We make um, roast beef, furthermore, business carries, what's a broad, pumpernickel, frog's legs, lobster, sand, scrambled eggs, two prunes, kidneys, two more hot and only two roast beef, roast hash, with eight, four, potato smash, bottle of beer, bed, and a horse's neck, and a pussy's tail. Get me a gym sling. I do the best what I can. Gym sling? You sound like a Chinaman. I don't know. Jim Fling. Yesterday was a zombie bomby, rombie boogie, woogie joogie. I don't know where the Harry Kerry. Hello, Dusty. What do you like that? I'll get to be a chocolate sundae. Do you want some chocolate sundae? Here you are. We get you a chocolate sundae. That's for Tootsie. Now, what do you have, Dusty? Uh, Nick, give me a glass of plain soda water. Yeah, sure. What flavor? Uh, I want it without flavor. Yeah, sure. Without what flavor? I want plain soda water without flavor. Well, Dusty, you don't have to holler ring with me. You know I ain't dim and dumb. You want it without flavor? All right. Without what flavor you want? Give it to me without pistachio. Uh, I don't think so. We got pistachio. I could give you without persimmon. Give me the plain water. Oh, <laughs> Don't get mad at me, dust that pudding with you. <laughs> Corny routine. 
routine you did last year and it still smells. Why don't you get something with a new twist? <laughs> You're all a bunch of Vickies. You're so clever, let me see you do better. Okay, Skinny, get me a woman's hat. Take some of your favorite stars from the motion picture world. Here's an Englishman. He reminds me of a pouting St. Bernard pup. That's all, brother. <clears throat> Mr. Castillo, you've disobeyed me. I'll see you hanging from the broadest yard arm in the Brooklyn Navy Yard, Fletcher Christian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and then if you, uh, if you find a new romantic interest and she isn't very much interested in you, you sort of lower your voice and talk like, uh, like one of our favorite French stars. Oh, cheers. Oh, hello, the dear. I cannot stand it much longer. Pepe must get away from the Gaspar. Paris. Have you ever been to Paris in the spring? Oh, mademoiselle, you are beautiful. <laughs> and if the lady is still unwilling to listen, you acquire the dulcet tones of a very romantic, sophisticated English actor as you look into her eyes and you say, Lily, you are the most fantastically beautiful woman I have ever seen in my life. Your eyes, your eyes are like limpid pools. Your teeth, your teeth are like pearls. And when I kiss you, ah, yes. When I kiss you, it is a far, far better thing I do than I've ever done before. <laughs> <laughs> and if she's still stubborn, perhaps she needs a heart treatment from that eminent physician of the motion picture world, a gentleman who reminds you of a chicken strutting across the barnyard as he uh, always has his hair in his face and uh, keeps in it. Now, see here, young lady, this Peter Kendrick isn't such a bad sort of a fellow. Why don't you give him a halfway decent break, you understand? <laughs> <laughs> wonder where my chocolate soda is. All this talent out here. Are those students or is there a show in town? Students. They did that in a class show. They making the money? No admission. Why not? That's undignified. You work for a living, don't you? Sure. But I ain't got no class. <laughs> you know, you're all right. I like you. Could I dance with her? Speak for yourself, John. Ask her. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'd take her to show off, too. What's the matter with her? She's anything like the company she's keeping. I'd say she worked at the five and dime. Uh, she looks like a million to me. Well, I'd like that. If you think she's that attractive, why don't you dance with her? Uh, correct. Absolutely correct. Don't you want to dance with me? No, I don't. Well, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. You don't want to miss it. Besides, you lead divinely. Oh, if I wasn't wearing glasses, would I fix him? Wait till my nails get longer and I'll take care of her, too. Let's try. Say, a few more lessons, you ought to be pretty good. May I sit down? Yeah, sit down. I like your imitations. Thank you, most people do. You're very clever. Where do you get your talent? Hereditary. I do imitations. Once I did an imitation of Washington crossing a Delaware so well, my hands got frostbitten. <laughs> Peter's mother was one of the greatest actresses in the theater. She was a wonderful singer. She appeared with the Metropolitan Opera, as a matter of fact. You remember her? Naturally. Did you ever see her perform? Of course, many times. What was her name? <laughs> what is this, a quiz program? Third degree, I'd say. What are you going to do with it, Peter? Take it or leave it? Your mother wasn't an operatic star. Your mother was a singer of little songs in a cheap vaudeville circuit. Five shows a day, cooking her own meals over a gas jet in 25 cent boarding houses. I knew your mother. I doubt that. I remember a little song your mother sang to you a long time ago. You give impressions, don't you? 
I'm going to give you an impression of your mother. I'm going to sing that song for you. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. <clears throat> Come on, I need a drink. Oh. Well, goodbye, lady. Hello. Is there anything wrong? Plenty wrong, but not with me. Tell what you do. Go back to the hotel and wait for me. Shall I change my clothes? I don't care what you do. I don't care anything you like. So what's the matter with you? I can't tell you now. Go back to the hotel and wait for me, will you? If anybody asks you any questions, tell them we're a couple of showgirls on the loose. Keep your mouth shut. Get it going, will you? Okay. Here you are, lady. That's your order. What are you order? You don't remember what you're ordering? No. Well, for heaven's sake, you're not even going to taste it? No, I don't want it. Then it's a gin fling. I know that my father founded the university, but, but what you ask is quite out of the question. No one wants to give endowments anymore. I don't know what's going to happen in midweek. Well, perhaps they should get a more active president. That's what some of the board members are saying behind my back, but I'm not through yet. Hope I'm not intruding. Door is open and I walked in. This is a surprise, Miss... Uh... Still Grace Hayes. This is Professor... I've had the pleasure. Hiya, Brexie. How you doing, boy? Why, I'm doing very badly. I'll be hopping along, Kendricks. Listen, I bought a million tickets to the football game. Midweek better win. We're hoping for the best. I don't know if this surprise is pleasant or not. I didn't come here to drink any loving cup. Boy, this furniture is in the same spot it was 20 years ago. Kendricks don't change, do they? Since Mrs. Kendricks died, we tried to keep things about as they were. Sorry to hear about your wife. That's very kind of you. You might add that it was also kind of me to send you dough to keep this Taj Mahal going these past years. I've appreciated that too. More than I can say. You've shown your appreciation by ruining my son. I had hoped he'd grow up to be a gentleman. But has he? No. He's an egotistical, extravagant show-off. When I left him here for you to bring up, I thought a silver spoon in his mouth would mean something. All it's done is add to his vanity. He's a discredit to the school, a disgrace to the Kendricks, and a pain in the neck to me. Well, perhaps I have been a trifle indulgent with the lad. I'll say. You probably pinned a rose on him every morning and put him to bed every night by the mirror so he could see what a great guy he was. He's really not a bad boy at heart. I'll find that out for myself. In the meantime, he's going to get rid of that hot chalk car and you cut his allowance down to nothing. But he's a... Not a penny, except for bus fare. Let him get a job. And he won't be so anxious to pose as a big shot spender. But what am I to tell him? He's quite in the dark about you. I don't care what you tell him. Tell him anything you like. Except that I'm his mother. I don't want him to know that. Not yet, anyhow. Blame it on the war, on the stock market, anything you like. But cut him down, or I will, and you too. Well, I'll do my best. I guess you mean all right, Mr. Kendricks. Even if you don't know how to unbend. Take a little of the starch out of that stiff shirt of yours and pour it into Peter's backbone. Goodbye. Did you see the tax cab driver? I told him to wait. I uh, took the liberty of dismissing him, seeing as I'm going your way. Oh, you are? Am I? 
Well, that is, if I can get this obstinate thing to perform properly, I'm going your way. What's the matter with it, big boy? See, it's the battery. It's starting to run down. The battery? You will run down. Let me get it there. I'll show you how to do it. Be careful, girly. Girly? <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> Come on, big boy, let's go. <laughs> She's a temperamental beast. <laughs> Do you think you know how to run this carpet sweeper? Oh, yes, I, I'm quite proficient. <laughs> Says you. Oh, you must have said that it's ungrammatical. Okay, Professor. <laughs> Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, it's you. Oh, I'm awfully glad. See, that awful person has been following me all over town. Here he is again. Don't worry, I'll protect you. I am. <laughs> Why don't you stop annoying this young lady? Go on, beat it. What, are you a wise guy or something? You think you own this town? I'll go when I'm good and ready. Uh, so now I'm ready. <laughs> Listen, you poor brat, if you don't leave me alone, I'll call a policeman. Well, I'm sorry for the way I acted, and I admit I was rude. Rude? That's a mild word for it. But the reason I've been following you about was to apologize. All right, so you've apologized. Well, uh, how about some air? Hot or cold? Cool. Midwick has some lovely country lanes. And, well, I promise you won't have to walk back. Well, it is awfully hot. But I'll have to be back soon. I have to meet my friend. Oh, <laughs> her? <laughs> Come on, let's go. Um, I'm afraid we'll have to walk back. You mean both of us? Yes. Yeah. That's what I was afraid of. At least you're a refreshing person to be with. I have my moment. Better not tell your wife you were stranded out on the road with the Black Widow. Oh, but I, I, I'm not married. You're not married? No. Neither am I. No. I saw that in a movie once and it worked. What movie? Oh, be your age. Well, loosen my girdle. Wasn't that your little friend with the uh, young Kendricks? He's beaten his father's time by two hours. Huh? I'll skip it. faces bankruptcy unless we adopt a different attitude. You seem to forget how difficult it is to raise money in these times. Was there ever a time when football was more popular? Some colleges live by it. Why can't we? I shall not subscribe to such commercialisms. The tradition of Midwick is a sheepskin, not a pigskin. Tradition? Living in the past? That's your trouble. You let football die here. It's got to be revived. We've got to have a winning team and we've got to have players to make it even if we have to go out and buy them. It's the most unethical suggestion I ever heard, and I refuse to listen. And then perhaps this board feels that Midwick needs a more modern mind to champion its cause. We might even entertain a motion for your resignation. Think it over, Dr. Warren. Well, Mr. Slim Jing, I try you now for the 62 times. Slim Jing, S for ice. L, L, lemons. Uh -huh. I, ice cream. Good, so far. C, L, S, L, I, M, M is for mustard, which we don't got any, so we put an egg. Ah. Now, Slim Jing, 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 Jing. Jim Sling, Fling, Ding, I don't know. 
Oh, how do you do? I just now mixed a fink string. Look at this. No, no, Nick. Yes, I want you to do me a favor. Yes, if I can. I want you to give me a job. Oh, I don't can do this. This is a small place. I cannot afford it. Then sell it to me. Sit. You don't being sarcastic now. No. Well, uh, if you want to buy, I give it to you for uh, eighteen hundred dollars. Okay. There's a thousand dollars. I'll send you a certified check tomorrow morning for the rest. A thousand. My breath is coming in short pants. I'm speechless. Stay speechless. And remember. Yes. I'm working for you. Oh, that's all right. I see what you mean. You don't have to drop no buildings on me. Uh, refuse me. One second. Ah, well, what a sense. Look, it's correct up here. Must be good all the way. <laughs> Service, please. Here, take these things. Yes, ma'am. I'll give you these things back tomorrow when you give me the stupefied check. I don't care what you do with them. She don't care, I don't care. What's your thirst, students, or perhaps it's hunger pain? I want to try a ginger fling, something with a bounce. I'll try one. Perhaps a... Coming right up. What? Grab yourself a tray. Hey, wait a second. She's with me. Quiet, Junior. A girl like Mary can get a boyfriend anytime, but a job, they're scarce. Get going. Wiggle your feet. What will you have? A beer. You'll take milk and like it. Hey, what is this, a nursery? I wasn't so far wrong about that five and dime business, was I? A Kendrick's out with a biscuit shooter, a hash slinger. There's a gag in here somewhere. She's not a waitress. She's a singer down on her luck. You mean she's a five-stepping sister up on her technique? You're going to like working here, kid. This is a very nice place. Wait a minute, I'll give you a check. Don't rush. Got to collect, you know. Yeah, yeah. Say, what's it all about? Did I ask you what it was all about when you went out with him? Follow my lead. Come on. Peter tells me you're quite a singer. Well, I can carry a tune. The best thing she does is carry a torch. <laughs> what I don't know. Tell Nick to put it on the cuff as usual. No more credit for you, big shot. Boss's orders. If this is Nick's idea of a joke, tell him to cut it out, or I'll take this gang somewhere else. I'll pay the bill. Oh, no, you won't. Hey, Nick! Yes? What's this baloney about no more credit? Well, you see, business is different this year than was last year. You know, business fluctuates. Yeah, fluctuates, you... then. Or can it come from hiring cheap help? Granddad, I was just going to phone you. Those uh, mental midgets in there informed me that my credit's no longer good. Would you sort of square me up and... Uh... I'll take it out of my next month's allowance. That's why I came to look for you, Peter. There is no allowance. You mean we're broke? Practically. Well, <laughs> I wish you'd have told me sooner. It would have saved me a lot of embarrassment. Well, have fun. That's tough on him, isn't it? That's what he needs. Oh, uh... Granddad, for your sake, believe me, I'm sincerely very sorry. But Peter, your father graduated from this college and so did your grandfather. Midwick without a Kendrick, it's, well, it's like an oak without acorns. <laughs> an acorn's a nut, isn't it? <laughs> if you're leaving on account of my situation, please don't. Midwick needs you. What for? I'm broke. Midwick's on its last legs. I'm down and out, and, well, I'm quitting. Go back to your class. May I come in? Well, come in, Miss Hayes. Mr. Kendrick and I were just visiting. What's that story about nasty little animals deserting a sinking ship? I don't like that remark. You pick up your marbles and you beat it when the gone's tough. I don't like little Lord Fauntleroy's. I don't like waitresses. What I do or where I go can't possibly concern you. I may be a waitress. But I can throw a chair from one end of this room to the other. With you in it. Oh, I'm worried. I won't be able to sleep for three minutes. You're Peter, fresh. remember your father was a gentleman. I must say the president of this college isn't very particular as to the company he keeps. I don't know what's happened to the boy. 
from a fine, upstanding young man. He's, he's turning into a fresh, no good. What are you saying? Everybody makes mistakes. I make mistakes. You make mistakes. He has a right to make a mistake. But don't you think he's abusing the privilege? Oh, why don't you stop? <laughs> Come on. Sit down. Sit down. The girl, he has an idea. Looks great. Do you like it? It's wonderful. But why? Don't ask questions. <laughs> what are you doing, Nick? I'm fingering out here. Uh, look, five hundred dollars for furniture. Uh, cash register, fifty. No, that's the same old one. Five hundred dollars for a chandelier. This is no good. Who can play this thing? You know something. This is going to cost me a fortune. Cost you a fortune. Yeah, that's what I say. It's going to cost you a fortune. Uh, look, um, how many gym slings do you think we got to sell before we're coming on evening? What do you care? Yeah, that's right. No, oh, those business. books are no good. and swords. What I do now? Nice camouflage. Give me a devil egg sandwich, or uh, should I ask for caviar? Is my credit good? I'm not the manager. That's something to be thankful for. Dad cut off my allowance. Mine's been whittled down to nothing. Me too. Nobody can pay me, so I'm out of the cleaning business. Hey, hello, Keats. Say, Nick, will you trust me for a hamburger? Uh, comes to trusting, you're gonna ask the proprietors. From respectability to a honky-tonk. I thought a little paint job might brighten the place. A repaint job all around wouldn't hurt. Say, poison ivy. Why don't you exercise your brain someplace else? I will. Come on, gang. One must be particular even in their choice of environment. Back for more insults? Just a glutton for punishment. I came to apologize, painful as it is. Please excuse my conduct. And you too. I'll knock your block off later. I'm glad you're not leaving Midwick. Well, it's not because of anything you said. I, I hocked a few things and I want to pay my bill. Where is it? Well, I tell you, Peter, you know, things is fluctuating, you know, I explained to you, so I sell the place up to this lady. This will cover it, and you can keep the change. Don't go, please. Peter, what I can understand is how someone who loves music as much as you do can have such a mean disposition. There's nothing wrong with my disposition. No. Nothing that a good spanking couldn't cure. <laughs> You've been listening to that old battle axe again. That old battle axe is 100%. If you like me, you've got to like her. Whew. Well, maybe she'll, uh, maybe she'll grow on me the way you did. I've learned to smile again My smile is in style again My life is worthwhile again I owe it to you I found my through with romance for my days were unseasoned 
Do I get my deviled egg sandwich or don't I? <laughs> Why don't you relax? Mary. Listen. All of you. I've got something to say to you. You can take it or leave it. I hope you can take it. The reason your guardians and parents aren't supporting your college is because you aren't worth it. Show them you can earn your education and they will back you. This is my lodge. I need talent. If you can supply it, either in the floor show or in the kitchen, I'll split the profits with you 50-50. You can clean up. I know this business. You can keep your college going and hold on to President Warren, whom you all love. Well, what do you say? Are you with me? I'll buy it. Oh, you would. I'm for it. Let's. Come on, kids, what are you waiting for? Come on up. You're wonderful. Here we go, laughing and scratching. Show me what you can do, and we'll knock them in the aisle. We'll slay them. <laughs> hey, come on, girls, let's do the this boom bop. Okay, make it hot. Oh, yeah. opera singer, remember? up with them or do we get out of here? 
You're great. Wonderful. Marvelous. Every one of you. Drinks on the house. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Give them anything they want. Everything is on the house. Oh, good. All kids, nothing for something. Go ahead. <laughs> Kill yourself. Oh, cutie pie. Good evening, Miss Hayes. Well, I was right. They're all for it. Yes, but it's dangerous, unheard of, ridiculous. Why don't you keep your shirt on and for heaven's sakes learn to tie your tie? I'm utterly immune to the wiles of women, Miss Hayes. Now you're boasting. <laughs> Anyhow, you're in trouble. The school's in trouble. But I know what is dangerous to the students' morals. As far as the students' morals are concerned, what about that old gag about the pot calling the kettle black? Are you implying that I'm a wicked man? <laughs> no. <laughs> but you have possibilities. For two cents, I'd wrap you in cellophane and take you home for myself. <laughs> Why don't you get in the spirit of youth? Youth? You should tell that to the board of directors. I'll rejuvenate you. Hey, Nick. Yes, ma'am? Give him a nice big tall glass of ginger ale and put a stick in it. Uh-huh. Prosefa? Thank you, Nicholas. Happy drinking. for me? Yes. I've located some money. There's a balance in your trust fund. Gosh. Thousand dollars. Here, this will start your show business. Hey, isn't it? Peter, that's it. You put it out. You put it in the show. You put it in the show, yeah? Peter, you're very generous. Will you be treasurer? Well, I imagine so. Someone will have to watch the money. Do you mind if I ride with you? I've hopped my automobile. <laughs> Would you like a drink with a juniper berry flavor? Don't you go too young on me. Don't you know they can hear everything you're saying out front? Where, is everybody ready? No, one of the fellows can't find his costume. Well, look, I'll go out and I'll stall a little bit, and when they're ready, you tap me on the shoulder. Hurry up. All right, get in your places. I'm the stage manager. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Keep your seat. Is everything all right? I'm perfectly splendid. Hope you have a pleasant evening. Thank you. Floor show will be on in a moment. Oh. Hello. Uh, friends, Romans, parents, teachers, and countrymen, we are about to present our intimate review. Please don't expect too much of us. As most of you know, we've been brought up with the uh, proverbial silver spoon in our mouths. Come on, hurry up in your places. Go ahead. Get set. <laughs> now, there's my cue. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
the show and well I'm not much on this MC business most MCs I've ever seen they usually run out on the stage and first thing they say is a funny thing happened to me as I was coming into the theater well nothing funny ever happened to me coming into the theater mm -hmm. until just a few moments ago a funny thing happened to me as I was coming into the theater a fellow walked up to me and he said I haven't had a bite since Thursday so I bit him <laughs>
it? I said, oh, hot stuff. <laughs> Look, I may be under the alcohol of alcohol. At least some think of me, peep so. But I'm not as drunk as I think you are. I guarantee you will like this next number. And that little hot stuff again. <laughs> Bob and boy, the May is sun, they gotta get out and shoulder a gun. It makes no difference when you're in the army. It makes no difference who you are or what your family tree. When I get up, you gotta get up, you're just the same as me. The sons are poor, the sons are rich, they gotta get out and dig in the ditch and answer to the call of revelry. If I eat beans, you're gonna eat beans. If you eat pie, I'm gonna eat pie. It makes no difference when you're in the army. Who? Who is it when everything is still? Will wake you and shake you just to take a pill? Who, I ask you, who? Your mother. Who is it when your temperature runs high? Will pace the floor and keep the score and never close her eye? Who? Who, I ask you, who? Your mother. Who is it when you sneeze or cough and choke? Well, tear the hair, grab a chair, sit down and have a smoke. Who, oh, I ask you, who? Your father. That's why I say it makes no difference when you're in the army.
Isabella. If you'd get a job, I'd be your steady fella. Annabella, say that you are mine. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like our first effort, you should know who's responsible for it. If you approve of the new spirit that's come to Midwick, you should meet our inspiration. If you please. I'd like you to know my mother. Peter, who told you? No one. It's just the way I wanted it to be. Oh, you old souls. <laughs> 